We've got to get ourselves organized for the 21st century. Step one, we've got to slash the White House cabinet and congressional staffs. Staffs don't get much done. All the action is in the field. But for example, in 1960, Congress had 6,700 staff members. Today they have 30,000. The White House had 375 in 1960, and today has 1,850. All they do is clutter up communications between the people and the leaders. We've got to change the whole organization in Washington so that people come to Washington to serve us and not to cash in. We absolutely must stop deficit spending. We've got to replace Graham Rudman with a bill that will really eliminate the tricks, the loopholes, and the improper accounting procedures. We've got to give the president line item veto to eliminate pork barrel and waste. We must eliminate PACs, political action committees. We've got to make our elected officials responsive to the people and not to the special interests. That's job one. We've got to eliminate all possibilities of special interests giving large sums of money to candidates, and we must leave no loopholes. We must limit political contributions to $1,000 and no other way. Today we hold elections on Tuesday. It's hard for working people to vote. They have to go early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Let's change it and hold elections on both Saturday and Sunday. Make it easier for working people to vote. We've got to require all members of Congress and the President to turn in excess political funds from prior campaigns to the U.S. Treasury immediately after a campaign. No grandfather exemptions, no exceptions. We must make adequate television time available in equal amounts to competing candidates. We must eliminate the need to raise millions for campaigns. This corrupts our process. As a matter of principle, we must get rid of all the freebies in Congress and the White House, such as free haircuts, free gymnasiums, free prescription drugs, free ambulance service, and the list goes on forever. These people are our servants. We don't have those things. Why should they? We've got to give the voters the exclusive right to grant Congress, federal employees, and the president a pay raise. That'll keep their heads clear on who they work for. Congress has given itself a retirement plan that's worth two to three times what you and I get. We need to bring it back in line with ours. Makes no sense for the people who work for you to have a better retirement plan than you have. You wouldn't let that happen in your business. Ninety-three members of Congress under the existing pension plan have retirements greater than two million dollars. Let's just make it competitive with our pension plans. Congress absolutely must stop exempting itself from laws it imposes on us, such as the Disability Act, the Equal Opportunity Act, the Occupational Safety Act, Fair Labor Standards Act, and believe it or not, sexual harassment. Only in America would they pass laws impacting us and exclude themselves. It's hard to believe, but we've got 1,200 federal airplanes worth $2 billion that are used to fly our servants around like royalty. Get rid of them. Let them get on a commercial airline, have the same experience we have. They work for us. We must restructure our system so that the citizens who come to Washington to serve us cannot cash in as foreign lobbyists. They must stop cashing in on public service. Former federal officials elected, appointed, or career civil service should never be able to serve for lobbyists for domestic interests for five years after they leave office. Never should they be allowed to lobby for foreign countries, companies, or individuals. We should impose criminal penalties for violators. We must pass a law stating that former presidents, vice presidents, cabinet officers, CIA directors, the Federal Reserve chairman, Senate majority leaders and speakers of the House can never lobby for foreign countries, domestic interests, accept gratuities or fees of any kind, or cash in on their service. Our current tax system is like an old inner tube that is covered with patches. We must replace it with a new, fair, simple tax system. Above all, the new system must be fair. It must also raise the necessary revenues. It should be paperless for most Americans. You can't put another patch on the old system and make it work. First, remember Cicero's words. The budget should be balanced. The treasury should be refilled. Public debt should be reduced. The arrogance of public officials should be controlled. That was true 2,000 years ago. History did repeat itself. Now that we have taken a look at some solutions, 
Where do we go from here? 